Well, it's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Each year, a number of our viewers step up to the plate and offer to create some program content for Tech for Senior. And we are so excited to have you do this. And if you are in the audience and you have something interesting you can do, well, just make a screencast of it, any sort of video, and we'll help you create a video that we can use in our show. Today, I'd like to thank Marie Scaglione from Stupid Computers in Florida. Uh, he's a good friend of Jim and Chris Gould and also a follower of Tech for Senior on our show. He responded to my query of uh, last year and said, I need some help with Apple devices and I'd like to create some more Apple content for our viewers. And he stepped up to the plate today and has created some short videos for you. I put them together in this 10 minute clip and I think you'll find them very interesting. I'm gonna talk first of all about the Apple ID and how it might be a little bit confusing and not as easy as you thought. And then he's gonna follow that up with show you how to log into iCloud and what you actually need to know. And once you're in iCloud, he's then gonna show you how to navigate around and then he's gonna talk about contacts. So let's get on to on with the video. And again, I would like to thank Maurice for the excellent work he did. All right, let's start with this presentation. You go into settings and up here you will notice that you should have your name. And if you click on this, it has your name here and the email address associated with your Apple ID. This is an important piece of information because you may discover at a later point that your Apple ID email address ends up being different than the email address you have used in the past to purchase applications, even if those applications are free. So I would like to bring your attention to an interesting problem that always comes up. If we come down here to general and we come up here to about, we come to this area here where it says capacity and available. Make a note of these numbers. This is the total hard drive size of your device, and this is the amount available to you. Now, in this demonstration, you see that I only have two photographs. My real account has over 60,000 photographs. And the important thing is that because I use iCloud backup, it does not take up all the space on my device. But the real reason we are here is because a majority of people get an email or a text from Apple telling them that they are out of storage space. When you get that, that warning has nothing to do with the total physical storage of your device. Instead, come up here to where your name is and click on that and come and click here where it says the word iCloud. If you look up here at iCloud, it says that I'm currently using 154 out of five gigabytes. The text that you normally get from Apple refers to this storage being used up. Now, five gigabytes in today's day and age is a paltry amount of storage, but this is Apple asking you now to give them a dollar a month to bump up your storage so that your photos, which are here, and you see that it says on, this means that my photos are being backed up to the iCloud photos. Now, I mentioned earlier that I have 60,000 photographs. They are not held on my device. What you do is click where it says the word optimize iPhone storage or iPad storage and you have this checkbox. This then allows the entirety of your photographs to be stored on iCloud and then small thumbnails are displayed on your device. Now, as long as you are internet connected, you are able to access all of your photographs. So you log into a website on a computer with your favorite browser and go to iCloud.com. You then enter the user name, which is your Apple ID. Now 
Now you should say keep me signed in. Then it will ask you for a password, which you will now enter. Then you click on this button here to log in. At this point, a security code is necessary. And if you scroll up here, you'll get this two-factor authentication. Look at the device that you have logged or linked and enter it as a number, which is only good for one use. I recommend that you say trust this browser for future usage. Go through what you see and click OK and it will slowly log into the web page. And now you will be in iCloud.com as yourself. And this is where you will now spend some time. Once you are here inside of iCloud.com, this is where you can go to various parts of the website to make sure that your important information is being safely backed up. This will come in handy when you buy a new phone or should you lose an iPad or an iPhone. If you scroll down here to this section here on the left, you will see a couple of important areas. And this is what you want to double check. Click on contacts and you should see your list of all the people in your phone book. If they are not here, it is important that we check that you have contacts turned on for backup in iCloud. When I click up here on the left on the word iCloud contacts, I am brought back to the main page. Here is the other super important area, photos. Click on this. Are all of your thousands of photographs that you have taken over the years safely stored here? Let's go back here in the upper left and hit iCloud again. Scroll down and we see here your notes. If you have notes written on your iPad or your iPhone, they are all synchronized here and it is easier to come in and edit them on the computer. And that's the point of this, that you can use a large screen computer to do most of your work as opposed to your small screen iPhone or iPad. Once again, let's come up here to iCloud and click to go back, scroll down, and here is the Find My section that helps you locate items that are lost. The Reminder section list is great because the reminders you do on either devices are all here. And lastly is the Calendar, where you could organize and create appointments here in a large screen format and not have to worry about using a small screen format. Let's go back here to iCloud and here under the main section what we want to do is go to the upper right corner and click on the bobblehead as I call it and now we're going to jump out of this area and go to the very important Manage Apple ID. Here we will get another verification code and we will have to enter it and this is why it's important that in this section you update to phone numbers and emails that are valid. If not, you will be locked out of your account. This Apple ID.apple.com that you can see up here is where you will now go and edit information. I won't go here into personal information, but if you click here, this is where you would make sure that your birth date and name is correct. The most critical is this account security. You would click on here and add multiple cell phone numbers so that you can get that confirming text that just let us in. If you don't have multiple phones and you've lost one of them, it's very difficult to get back in. Secondly, here under email and phone numbers, you can add other email addresses. 
that are going to help you get back in. Lastly, down here, if you're using Outlook, Thunderbird, or some other kind of third-party program, this is where you can create the application-specific password to help you get in. The last thing I want to show you is if you scroll all the way down here and you click on Contacts. For those of you who are interested in an old-fashioned phone book, you can come up here to the three dot circles and click on it. You say select all contacts. You come over here to the right to where the share box is with the up arrow. Click on that. And now, if you come here to print contacts, you are able to print your entire phone book to have it as a backup. Click here on the word print. Well, thank you so much, Maurice, for doing that. Maurice is from Stupid Computers in Florida, United States. And thanks so much.